All right, thank you all for joining today's webinar. Sorry, we're running a minute behind. We're having some networking issues. I think the cold in North America is just freezing everything up. Um, so with that, we're glad to have you today. Um, as you know, we're following this on the social streams as well. So uh, feel free to let us know where you're watching us from. For those watching on Zoom, just the housekeeping items, you know the session's being recorded, your audio is muted, and you can feel free to ask questions in the questions field. Uh, this is awesome. It looks like we got people from all over the world again. So welcome from the UK. We have some Brazil, California, early for you. Hopefully you're a lot warmer than we are uh, here right now um, in the US. So here's Marianne Post. We're so happy to have her on today's session. She does an amazing job with these. As you know, she's one of our AVID master instructors and also writes most of our curriculum. Um, and today we're covering advanced trimming, getting the most out of trim mode. And Marianne, I know, um, as usual, you're trying to fit a lot into a short period of time. So I'm going to hand it right over to you. All right. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Hopefully everybody is well. And if you are in North America staying warm, because I can tell you here in Ohio, freezing. Um, and yeah, today we're going to cover trimming. And I'm going to start off by sharing my screen right away. This is one of my favorite phases of editing because it's very zen. Now, if you don't agree or you found that you sometimes trimming works, sometimes it doesn't, uh, this session is for you. Uh, so if you're looking for some power tips, this session's for you. Uh, the big takeaway is going to be the workflow, making sure you've got a solid feel for that or on track to get a solid feel. And then when I start introducing different methods of trimming, the workflow is identical. All right, so let's go. Um, I, with trimming, you can work in a variety of types of programming. Uh, the first project that we're gonna work in is actually a classic. We have an interview. We have some montage footage with some Nat sound attached to it and we have some voiceover and music. Okay, so a lot of elements going on. Uh, also have a scene, a narrative scene, where each character has its own track of audio, how to work with that. Uh, it's gonna be the same approach as with the rock climber. And then finally, which uh, based on my rehearsal, I'm not gonna get to, but one power tip in case we don't get to this is mastering the trim tools and methods in a simple montage. This is a music video. We've got music on A1, A2. And then I have flagged different things I'd like to trim, which all the methods I show today will apply. And it's super simple because the only thing you'll have to worry about is a V1 track activation. All right, so in the rock climber, I'm gonna play this back uh, moment. Um, it's just under a minute and it'll give us some um, context as to what elements are in the sequence that we're gonna have to pay attention to when we trim. Uh, so I'm going to hit shift command F to go into full screen, shift control F on windows. Only thing available now is my keyboard. So I'm going to hit space bar. There's something about approaching the rock and just touching the rock that really just brings me closer with the rock and with nature. Uh, I get the chance to, the opportunity to look up and just see what I'm about to conquer. And uh, sometimes it gives you like chills. To me, rock climbing isn't necessarily how hard you can climb. It's about the whole experience. There's a point in routes when you get to a really difficult part, but if you don't commit to it and know you're going to get it, you're not going to get it. When you mess up on a route and fall, you yeah. just have to get right back on it. You have to commit. Okay, so I just hit space bar to stop. Um, and when you're in full screen mode, you can use any of your keyboard options. And then I'm just gonna click in my screen and I'm back. Okay, so as you heard and hopefully saw, which for me, mine was a little bit delayed coming over Zoom. Uh, you might've seen a little bit of a delay too. So we may be relying a little bit on visual cues, which is one of the challenges with teaching uh, trimming over Zoom, but we will work with it the best we can. And so 
the um, first piece of this is the workflow and just getting comfortable with trimming if you're not. And that may involve using the tool palette. And we have trim type here. If I right click on this, we have a roll trim, red trim, which I'm not gonna really get to today due to our time, and then a yellow trim. So for right now, I'm just gonna turn both of those on. If you're looking for power tips because you're trimming all the time, my power tip to you is move on from these tools. Okay, but if you're just trying to get comfortable in Media Composer with trimming, these are the tools you're gonna want. Okay, workflow wise then, which no matter what method of trimming you use or approach or strategy, always the same, three parts, uh, three steps essentially. First step is what edit do you wanna trim? And in my timeline, I have a marker here at about this spot. Just see what I'm about to conquer and uh, sometimes it gives you like chills. Okay, we wanna remove the line. Sometimes it gives you chills, okay? Um, now in Media Composer, you're always paying tra attention to track selectors. Um, I'm constantly paying attention to them because I'm used to it. But if you're coming from another program where when you trim, it keeps all the other uh, either tracks or lanes, depending on which program you're coming from, in sync, so they all move together, you're gonna to wanna to use something called sync locks. And so at the bottom of my timeline, I'm here on the far left, cause I know it can be a little small on Zoom or social. I've got a slash next to a time code track. If I click that, that actually turns on sync locks for every track. And then I can always pick and choose which tracks have sync locks on. For right now, I'm gonna do it for all of them. Okay, now I'm working like other programs where everything's always in sync. Um, the reason I don't just automatically turn this on for Media Composer is it's come, sometimes I get in the way, um, which you'll see. Next, I need to find the edit that I wanna trim, and it's this one, coming in from the interview to the first montage clip. Um, if you've got your trim tools active, you can just click your edit and it will activate it. Um, I don't have toggle links selected on in here, so it did not activate any associated audio or anything like that. I'll just make sure that's on. What it did was it made my uh, outgoing shot, which is the interview, the A side, which is important in Media Composer, uh, yellow. And then it also selected all the other tracks because of sync logs. So it's gonna trim everything, whether you see that in another program or not. Okay, so I've selected my edit. And in this case, I want everything because I want to keep everything to the right in sync. And it's never the stuff to the left that really goes out of sync, it's the stuff to the right downstream. So in this case, I want my music, the voice, the NAT sound and the video all to stay together, sync locks on everything or select all tracks. Okay, second step after you select your edit, select your side, which I did by clicking on kind of the side to the left of my playhead and that's the outgoing side. It takes me into trim mode, which is why I have two frames. I've got the last frame of the outgoing shot, A side, first frame of the incoming side, B side, which is that first piece of B-roll. This pink counter is highlighted. That's telling me also a hint as to which side selected. Because I've had students come back to me say, I can't tell. Okay, so now I have a really big obvious visual when you're just trying to shorten one clip, okay, a single roller trim, one pink roller, sorry, pink highlight yellow is highlighted on the left side of my playhead, okay? If I actually click on this image here, it's gonna take me to the other side, okay? Now the right side or incoming side to the right of my playhead. So you're gonna to wanna to get used to those visual cues and it just takes a minute. Experience leads to, and practice leads to mastery, of course, just like in life, uh, applies to trimming. Okay, so I've got two things covered, which edit, which side. Um, always asking this. And then as you get more experience with it, it um, becomes automatic. So um, regardless of what level you're at for trimming. Next is which direction do I go? In trimming, it's all about direction, not adding and reducing frames. So in this case, I wanna shorten this so that it ends where the marker is. If I'm dragging, and if you drag in other programs in any program you work on, you're gonna drag to the left. So in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Clicking and dragging, notice that everything's moving. And that's those sync locks helping me out. And there I go, I just performed the trim, okay? And you might be thinking, well, yep, that's why I just drag and dr drag trim. I don't need any other methods, um, sessions over. 
you're going to see pretty quickly that you're going to be way more efficient using other ways. But this is a great way to get comfortable. All right, so I'm going to hit space bar. And just see what I'm about to conquer. To me. And there we go. We've got the trim. OK, so select edit, select side, select direction, success. Um, let's add on. So I'm going to go to a different edit here. Uh, it feels like we're hanging on this foot shot forever. Footwork is important in rock climbing, very important, but not that important to this session. So we're going to fix the pacing. And this marker, I don't have a markers window open because of real estate space. I'm actually in a magnified space right now. It's a shortened by one second. And that means the beginning of the shot. So I'm going to zoom in. And you can see that this cutaway or this uh, B-roll clip is two seconds and 18 frames. So we basically just want one second and 18. Let's go through our workflow and kind of on your own as I go through this, um, see if our ideas align as to how we approach this. Okay, so um, I could grab a trim tool. Okay, we just saw I click the trim tool and click an edit. But if you're gonna be trimming all the time and I just said, hey, you wanna start moving away from the trim tool, um, this tip's gonna help you. I'm gonna lasso my edit. In fact, outside of teaching or recording videos for curriculum development, I never use this tool actually. Um, instead, I'll do something like a lasso. And what I love about lassoing, and I just started above and dragged through my track and hopefully you guys can kind of see that highlight, the white box around my edit through all tracks. That gets me into trim mode and actually selects the tracks overall that I'm gonna need, okay? So I've selected my edit, okay, which is between the clipping shots and the footwork shot. Now I wanna select my side. Well, I wanna shorten the footwork shot. So I can click this image here and I'm gonna show you guys all the keyboard shortcuts in just a second once we finish this process discussion. Um, and now I select that side. Now notice I have two yellow rollers based on my track selectors. And then I have a roller on filler, which actually I need because I wanna keep the interview footage to the right downstream. That's what throws us out of sync in line with what I'm about to trim. So I want that roller. Uh, now I've got a roller in the middle of music. So here's where sync locks can start getting you into trouble. You really, filler, you're usually okay. Um, there's always exceptions to everything. But as soon as you start seeing rollers in the middle of clips, you're gonna wanna start rethinking sync locks. I'm gonna leave them on for right now. Now drag and drop method, I can do it without a tool active. And there are times where I actually do drag trimming. It's rare. But if I need it, it's great. And I don't even have to select the tool. I just lasso, select my side and go. Um, and I'm going forwards here. I'm gonna go forwards like about a second. And it's taking me forever. So this is why I don't like dragging because I know I need a small amount. So I tend to drag slow, but there we go. 24 frames. Um, the result though, couple things. Um, I'm gonna play this back and you might hear it. If not, I will show you the obvious challenge here. It's about the whole experience. There's a point. In okay, I barely heard it, but I actually cut the music and removed a second of it. Um, and it cut pretty well. So you may not have heard that at all, but you'll see that I now have a number, a duration for this piece of music because I did just cut it. Um, the other thing that just happened is my shot was two seconds and 18 frames, and now it's a second and 18, which is great. Okay, so that part works. So what am I going to do? I'm actually going to undo because I want to show you guys another method. Um, with the same exact strategy with a couple changes. Okay, change number one, I'm gonna turn off sync locks for the audio, okay? Um, my cursor is causing things to slow down just a little bit with my clicking. Okay, so I've got that. Um, or I could just do track selectors, which is what I typically do. All right, so now I'm no longer gonna trim this track because it's not selected and the sync lock's not on, okay? Two, we selected our edit, we selected our side. Um, that's never going to change. Methods are going to maybe change your strategy a little bit. So in this case, I want to remove 24 frames, let's say. Um, and I'll have this. I'll sit with a client and they'll say, hey, can you take off 11 frames? Or can you add 10 frames? And I always like to show them the value to show that I'm listening. 
so that we can collaborate together and communicate together. So in this case, me as the producer is saying, let's shave off, let's remove 24 frames. And that 24 frames, um, you may be thinking subtraction. So this is the other thing that caused people to say, hey, sometimes trimming works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm on my laptop, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the control key twice. And that's gonna give me numeric entry. If you have an extended keyboard, use your numeric keypad. You're gonna be so much faster with um, number entry for trimming and navigation. And I'm gonna type in minus, and I'm gonna do one second, one zero zero, or I can do the shortcut one period to get two zeros. And I'm gonna hit return or enter on Windows. And something's weird. Um, I, my original duration was 218, now it's 318, okay? So this is what causes trim mode to sometimes work and sometimes not work. It's all direction driven. It's not addition and subtraction. And it really isn't in other programs either. We just sometimes think it is. Okay, so what's going on? Think of the direction, which is why if you're really struggling with trimming, use drag method because you can tactilely solidify what I'm about to show you. And I'm just gonna do a quick undo here. If I were gonna drag this to shorten in, I'm thinking drag forwards because I want my end to start later. I wanna get into this footage later. That's a positive direction, okay? Um, positive is always positive number. So it has nothing to do with addition and subtraction. So I'm gonna control twice. I've got my data entry box. And I'm gonna just type in plus one, and I'm gonna use period this time for two zeros, okay? Or use your numeric keypad and you don't have to use the control key twice. And then I'm gonna hit return, enter on windows. And now I've got my one second and 18. So I think that's why it's hit or miss. Um, and this is usually where the things come together in my advanced classes. We intro this in the, in the um, entry level classes, but you're just trying to wrap your head around the software. So this doesn't quite connect. So as we get into advanced and intermediate and advanced, this is where we make those connections. Trimming is all about directions. So you have three steps total that you'll wanna solidify which edit, which is usually the straightforward part, which side, which in this case was the head of the shot, and then which direction. Well, I wanna come later into the shot, which is a drag to the left. So if you are using numeric entry, that's a positive number. The other one, when I was at the tail of my shot, I was um, going back to the left and that's why it was a negative number. Whenever you're at the tail of the shot, it pretty much does what you want it to do which is why sometimes it feels like it works and sometimes it doesn't. Dragging to the left shortens, negative. Dragging to the right, positive adds. Always like that with tail. Head of shot is always the opposite. Okay, so hopefully that demystifies that for you. Last example here is if you're gonna do a split edit. So I just lassoed my edit. I wanna cut to the video and audio a little earlier. Let me just reframe just a little bit for you guys. So I wanna to cut to this earlier. The beauty with dual roller trim, um, which a lot of other programs call like a roll edit, is that uh, you select your edit and direction and that's it because you don't have to select your rollers, okay? If you find yourself in a single roller setup, you can go ahead and just click between the frames, okay, to set this up as well. All right. So in this case, with dual roller, you don't have to worry about going out of sync because what moves things out of sync is clips moving, not the actual shortening and lengthening of shots. And with dual roller, you're actually going to evenly shorten one shot and lengthen the other. And in this case, I want to take this back so we cut to the B roll, so the incoming side, earlier. All right. And so I'm going to... Let's say, uh, I'm gonna use my trim buttons. So back to the left, because we haven't used those yet. There's a keyboard equivalent. I'm gonna highlight in just a second. All right, let's just go three times. Um, so I went about a second. I could have done minus 24, minus 100 as well, because I'm in 24p footage. Now I'm cutting to this early. It's a split edit. Video and audio are cutting before they is done talking, okay? The opportunity to look up and just see what I'm about to conquer. Okay. The opportunity. All right. So there you go. It's a little awkward right now, but it technically shows what you guys need to see. All right. So there's all that. Next level. 
Um, so in a dialogue, especially if you've got your characters set up so that one character's on one track and then the other character um, is on another track, and in this case also sound effect, um, but we're trying to keep it a little bit simple. So this time I'm going to start pointing out some options on the keyboard and I'm going to focus on, and I closed my keyboards, so let me call that up real fast. Uh, shift command equals, shift control equals on Windows. That opens settings or file menu. User setting, K for keyboard. So if you're still getting used to what's on your keyboard, just open it and use it as reference. You're not going to press these keys. This is literally just a reference, just for your reference. All right, there we go. Um, and I don't have it open a lot during live online learning because of my real estate space, but we're going to use this. So my first um, edit here, just kind of to con give you context, is this is a narrative. Mary here, Mary, meet Mary. She is at the dentist and starts hearing really creepy sounds and she's gonna go investigate. And where we're at in the fine tuning phase is this. She's leaving the office cautiously. But when we cut to this shot, um, she's still pretty far in. By the end of this shot, she'd probably be almost out the door. So I actually have a marker in my timeline to kind of give me a quick reference about where she should be when we cut to the shot. She should be about here. Oh, sorry. Okay, and then confrontation ensues. All right, so trimming this with the keyboard, my favorite method, strategy exactly the same. Step one, what edit? Well, it's going from her leaving the office, seeing the back of her head, to seeing the front of her, but later, okay? On the keyboard, um, I can enter trim mode by lassoing, or if you prefer, you can use the U key that enters and exits trim mode. So there's a key for you to think about. Once I'm in trim mode, I can select a side. In this case, this side's fine. What I wanna do is adjust this side. So I'm gonna click the image, or I can use the keyboard equivalent. P key does your outgoing side. You can watch the rollers change here. This will tell you what's selected. P on your keyboard is outgoing. Left bracket is both. And right bracket is incoming. You can see those keys right here on the left of my screen. P, left, and right bracket. So you can use your keyboard to change sides. If you're having, don't remember to click or struggling even to just click with a the tool, they work for that too. Okay. I'm going to use JKL to trim this. And I'm going to add on a feature because I'm not using sync locks. I actually usually don't. Um, so here's the trick. Um, and here's my absolute most common way of trimming. I've selected my side. I've got my edit. Now I need to select, make sure proper tracks are selected. If I enable A2, it's going to select this shot. Well, I'm about to roll forwards. So if you're thinking, hey, you got to go forwards to the right, just do it, stop talking, you're correct. Um, but I'm also going to end up trimming this clip because that's where the roller landed when I turn this on. Okay. Oops, just double click. Okay. So what I'm going to do is option, add, edit. Okay. Option, add, edit, alt on Windows. And I usually have this mapped to my keyboard. I get a temporary edit on filler. So there's so much filler trimming that goes on. Now I'm ready to do my trim, okay? Now it feels like, oh my gosh, setting this up is so tedious. It's not, it just takes a minute to explain. Um, and there's tons of flexibility ahead. So now that I've got my track selected, so I keep everything in sync downstream, I'm gonna hit my L key. Notice everything's moving, I just paused. Everything's moving back because I'm rolling up filler, which is keeping everything downstream. That's what goes out of sync in um, tag. Okay, so I just finished uh, doing that trim, but let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can hopefully see, because I know it's gonna be really hard to hear, not that there's much going on, she's just walking. Okay, what if I go too far? Oh, I just pretty much annihilated this whole shot. I got 10 frames. Oh. Stylistically, that may work, but I did go too far. Your temptation might be to undo and try again, undo, try again, that kind of thing, which makes trimming feel really clunky. Once you're in trim mode, you can stay in trim mode. I'm using spacebar to play loop. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and roll backwards. So whatever method you choose, whether it's numeric entry, um, which I'm terrible at, um, kudos to you if you're using that, your buttons, I've been going forward. So if I have to go backwards, I go backwards or keyboard equivalent, your M through forward slash keys, or my favorite method, JKL. I used L to play forwards, which actually perform the trim. J can go backwards to unroll some of this. Okay, and K pauses, by the way, your space bar. And I can use K and L to go slow motion. And I release my L before my K to stop or K and J to go backwards. It's the most interactive tactile version of trimming once you get used to it, um, which is why it's my go-to. And I can really dig in and finesse. It's like creating, it's like the difference, be it becomes a difference between using um, pre-assembled furniture and you get the little uh, screwdriver wrench thing and custom crafting it yourself. Um, Dragging when you really need to finesse sequences is the equivalent of using a little wrench. And then you can really finesse with like something like JKL. So I can just go forward just a little bit. I'm just holding OK and tapping L. Play loop. And there we go. OK. Um, so uh, that's the thing. That's it. Um, I have one last tiny tip for power tip users that I wanna quickly show because man, time flies when you're presenting. Um, and that is analyzing at a cut point. No matter what method you use, you can use this as well. So I'm just gonna go into trim mode here. And what I wanna just show real fast is what if you're not sure which side, you've got the question of what edit, but you're stuck as to which side. During play loop, you can use your cue, go to, in button and W. Q is pointing to the left, so that's going to play the left side. W points to the right, so that's going to play the right side. So you can analyze this and then use whatever trim modes I showed today to perform the trim. So let's just do that real fast to see the preview. Yeah, tooth very busy. Oh, uh, yeah. You plain loop. Say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tooth very busy. Q? Uh, yeah. yeah. Tooth very busy. Uh, left side. Yeah, tooth w? Tooth. You could say that. <laughs> You, you could say that. <laughs> okay, so there's actually an issue on both sides. So first I would tackle this side and I can again play loop and just hit Q to preview that side. And then I'd tackle this side. So it's two different trims that actually need to go in two different directions. So it is two trims, right? So, yep, that was a little longer, but um, hopefully those key takeaways and hopefully I helped demystify and make trimming Zen for you. And I'm not sure if we have time for any questions, but I would love to field a question or two if we have the time. Um, yeah, let's just squeeze a few in here. First, um, what version of Media Composer are you using? I'm on 2020.12, uh, but everything I've shown today is essentially in any supported version that you might have. Um, it's been around since about the beginning of Media Composer, so you can all of this, I've been teaching this since way back when numbers were like version six and seven. So 2020.12. <laughs> okay. Um, we do have several questions that came in. And uh, just a quick note is Mary Ann is doing a session next Thursday as well for advanced trimming. And we're covering uh, slip and slide features, I do believe. So if we don't get to all yes. the questions, hopefully we'll get some answered in the next session as well. Um, for trimming music, what if I make a pick edit and don't have the option to unlock the music track because I have more I want to add later in the sequence? Do I work in trim mode without taking a chunk? How do I work in trim mode without taking a chunk out of the music? Okay, let me go back to Rock Climber. Um, actually, let me even call up this. So if you've got um, music in your timeline, uh, you can essentially trim freely all the other tracks without ever selecting your music and it'll just stay put. Okay, so just don't try select those tracks if you're working like in a montage, that kind of thing. If you're working in something like the Rock Climber here, um, and again, you don't wanna affect your music. If you wanna work with sync locks, sync lock everything but the music, okay? And then as you get into like something with an interview here, you could see if I go into 
trim mode right now and select the side, it's also going to try to select that audio. Again, it, we don't want to trim that. If you're using sync locks, just turn those off. Um, and if you're just doing straight up track selectors, just select the tracks that you can trim. So it's all about track selection off and sync locks off for those tracks and then they won't trim. Hopefully that answers that one. All right. Um, can you input numbers of frames numerically? Yes. Um, so I kind of did that with one second, uh, but I could absolutely do it with frames. Let me just go to this because a dual roller is a great way to practice this. So if I want to just move the video only forwards, let's say 10 frames, I can do, I just hit control twice because I'm on my laptop and I forwards plus, I'm going to just do plus 10. Okay. Um, so you can just absolutely do it. Like I'm in 24, instead of doing one zero zero, I could have done plus 24. If you need to trim and you've got frame counts and it's over 99, you just have to type in F. So for example, if I want to do minus a hundred frames, I'm right now set up for one second, which is just going to be 24. I can do F. And then it'll translate to time code, but that's 100 frames. And we'll see how we we'll go back pretty far. Okay, so yeah, I was typing in, when you start typing of 100 and above, it becomes seconds in frames. So if I want to do one and a half second, it'd be one, one, two. Um, but I could do, you know, 48 frames, 36, that kind of thing as well. And over 100, add the F key. All right, um, let me see. Maybe we can squeeze one more in. I know we're, we're over on time. Um, can you show asymptomatic trimming while keeping those downstreams in sync with a music track you don't want to mess up? Would that be similar to the locking one you just showed us? So you want to keep all your um, music tracks in sync. Yeah. But, you don't, but they don't want to trim it. Yeah, so if, um, if it's kind of like what I was doing earlier, you want to be on filler then, okay? And then when you go into trim mode, um, I will then option add edit and it will add edit to that, that filler track. Now, if you've had to lock your audio track totally, you can't access it. It's locked, locked. You're not even gonna be able to do sync lock it or anything because it's a locked, locked track but um as long as the track isn't like you're just your audio is there but you're just trying to keep it in place you'll use like the add edits um but also when i use my sync locks it will do the let me just turn this off a second it will auto add that add edit so it's just trimming on the filler if you're in a scenario like this if you're thinking well yeah um I need to keep everything in place downstream, but it's going to edit in the middle. You're going to have to come, you, that's going to cut, require multiple, multiple trims because this right now is absolutely going to trim in the middle of this clip. So if I've got multiple music elements and that kind of thing on this track, I will turn off sync locks, do my trim, and then I may have to, I'll have to memorize my frames and do some adjustments in another spot. Okay. Um, you can also do, which I'm not set up for an asynchronous trim where you set up rollers on opposite sides in different places in your timeline, um, which if that's the question, I can go ahead and put that in the slip and slide session next week. Perfect. Is there a way to snap the edit point to your cursor or something similar? Well, the thing with a cursor, um, is that as soon as you go into trim mode, whether you're doing a tool or not, your playhead um, moves. Now, if you're thinking, oh, can I click and drag or do a trim to this point? Uh, no, but what you can do is you can use in and out marks and snap to those. And then sometimes, and um, I'm also able to snap to markers. But what I just did, I just actually did a drag. So that's when you're gonna wanna use drag. I'm holding down my command key and it'll snap to other edits. So I just snap to the voiceover end and now I just snap to an out mark. So I use in and out marks when I need to snap to something and then usually use a different method, but you can also do the drag method as well. That works. 
Okay, um, it used to, let's see. It used to be you could hit option arrow, go to cut, and it would go into trim mode. Is this option still available? Yeah, so um, it's actually um, based on your keyboard layout. Um, in so option arrow, if you're thinking left, right arrow or option up and down arrow, no. But what will take you automatically by default keyboard shortcut into trim mode is the A and S key. We'll take you to the next edit and, and that. Um, as far as option key goes, the only one I know is you could switch to the red uh, trim method by holding down your option key when you're on a single roller. I can option um, really mess up my sequence actually and do that. But as far as the option on Media Composer and air, an arrow key taking me into trim mode, that may be before my time. Um, but yeah, A and S key will take you into trim mode and to nearest edit. All right, awesome. And I know we ran uh, a little over. Let me just go ahead and quickly bring up the slide here for our next session so everyone can see that as well. Um, so hopefully you see that. As we just said, Marianne will be doing a session next week covering slip and slide features. So we'll go over more advanced trimming steps. Um, so Marianne, thank you again for having the session today. Um, for those of you that may also be dabbling in Pro Tools, we have Amy Hagerman also on February 25th. Um, again, get those questions to us uh, at liveonlinelearning at avid.com. We'd love to get those over to Mary Ann. She loves to create these sessions based on your feedback. Uh, so that's always, you know, uh, things we're looking for. Well, what would you like to see? What would you like us to cover in these? Um, so we appreciate those emails. And then you can look for the webinars to be posted back to avid.com. And that's the online learning webinar page. I think I got that all in, Marianne. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, thank you again, Marianne. And I hope you stay warm um, where you're at. And you we have people sending you sunshine from South Africa and California and a few other places. So maybe we'll get that wow. sunshine here soon. So. Please, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much, Marianne. Once again, amazing session. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.